Right, we're back and uh, time to look at what uh, uh, has been trending in terms of the conversations uh, uh, on the social space, like we say, we will normally bring them up right here uh, on The Breakfast. Um, the first trending story, uh, the road traffic agencies um, uh, were told uh, uh, to form a task force over the Ojua Legba bridge crashes. And yesterday we talked about um, uh, uh, some accident, you know, on Ifako Bridge. Uh, and it involved uh, a, a tanker. And it gave us the opportunity um, to look at the, the incident, the high incident of, of heavy duty, you know, truck accidents in Lagos State. And we went back in time from 2016 to see the headlines that we kept having and how many people had lost their lives. You know, and headline after headline, you know, trailer truck crashes into um, commercial bus, trailer truck hits five vehicles, three dead, you know, tanker falls down, crushes car, a container falls off, and it's been on and on and on. And so um, I think yesterday we, we, I, what I said was, um, you know, the authorities, especially the Road Safety Corps, need to, need to have a special plan and program for uh, um, the heavy duty trucks, at least in Lagos, because there's something wrong. And, but, but this would do a leg by bridge on its own. is actually um, famous, not me say yes, for falling containers, 40 mm. feet containers and stuff off trailer trucks. And what we're told is that the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority uh, and the Federal Road Safety Corps in Lagos State um, have formed a joint task force to address the incessant truck crashes on that particular Ojeolegba Bridge, as well as other road accidents in Lagos State. Um, the General Manager of LASMA, Bologi Oriagba, uh, stated this when he received the new Sector Commander of FRSC um, and his team in his office. So I hope this is not just um, a statement, but uh, it's something that they actually are going to follow through. And I'm happy it's coming uh, now, because we, we talked about it just yesterday morning. So it, it's fantastic. So, so you like my bridge, I'm sure you've talked about it once or twice. What, what yeah. will the tax force be doing? And what are the people, the individual constituents of that tax force doing right now? Uh, because if you have a duty to perform, <laughs> if you perform it well, you don't even need to get to set committees, set joint tax force, set this and that. Everybody now talks about just um, uh, looking at papers, car papers and all that. I know there's something called roadworthiness. Who checks that? How do they even check it? These containers go on our roads in a populated city like Lagos without latches. They just go there, nothing to hold the containers. And then... These trucks, like you said earlier, break down so much that it's alarming. What happens? Why do they break down? Who checks them whether they're roadworthy? You enter a bus, and then there's a bus in front of you, and the smoke coming from that bus is choking you in another bus behind or in another car behind, except you have AC and you wind up and all that. And then nobody talks about it. Then you talk about roadworthiness. What kind of roadworthiness are you think, thinking about? Who do you check? And who does this? Who should check? Who should make sure that the vehicles on the road are in good condition so that they don't harm other people? We lose lives that are not supposed to be lost. It's you know, terrible. You know, you know, you know in, in this, and I mean, I'll go there. It's, I like the way you would ask it. That, you know, ordinarily, these, these agencies have their work, you know, their, yeah. their, their, their roles. You know, they do have to form, have a meeting. But well, I think at least they're doing something uh, I know that LASPA doesn't have any legal backing to check your, your particulars. They're your only CEO. Um, Officer One, <laughs> uh, between uh, Jibo or Balinde and uh, uh, wherever, there's traffic, mm. Kefi Street. Okay, Area Commander One, over. <laughs> one, two, he jumps and then they go there yeah. and then they try to. I know it's funny and all that, but the, the, the thing is, I think the FRC has more of a role to check these particulars. In fact, they have regulations, uh, road safety regulations that have been updated, I think 2021 or 2022, you know. And if you go through that document, you realize there's a lot that they're not implementing. They are not. There's a lot. If you go through that, if, but the thing about it is that if they want to implement it, eh, I think maybe 50% of the people who are driving on roads will stay at will park their cars at home, you know. Yeah, um, but, but the thing is, you're still saying that these guys ordinarily need to do their job, so they don't have to have a meeting. They don't. A joint committee. To, but 
Anyway, at least they have acknowledged it and they want to do something about In fact, the MD, um, or GM of LASMA, hailed in the statement released yesterday, hailed his organization. Mm. He yeah, hailed he hailed himself, himself, yeah. For how, LASMA, for how it had been rescuing accident victims, particularly those involving truck crashes in the state. Fine, Mr. LASMA and GM, fantastic. But we want, don't want there to be victims. We want this to be prevented. Like they say, Prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. But well, uh, one, one thing he's saying is that um, for the sequel to the need, these are his words, to prevent further loss of life and property through truck crashes in Oj on Ojo Legba Bridge. Lasma has deployed tra trained officers to be redirecting heavy duty trucks and tankers from Ojo Legba Bridge at the code route. So th that, I think, is um, uh, uh, sort, of like a, a sort of a solution, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, so is it they're not going to use the bridge anymore? Because the last one that happened was really sad. Remember the last time was like a couple of months ago, mm. where the, the container fell on on a, a mini a mini bus. Yeah, it was it was so sad, and including a child and a mother passed on. You know, so that's really sad. But it's also saying that they are, the agency is collaborating with um, uh, agencies like the state ambulance service. That's what they should ordinarily do. The Lagos Emergency Management Agency, yeah, I just uh, NEMA. Lagos Fire and Rescue Service and NSCDC, but you know, that's what they should do. You, you said there were regulations that uh, have been updated and all that. At, at some point, they told us that if your car broke down on the road, uh, there will be a towing van that will take it to the nearest place that it will be safe. Or maybe a, mecha takes, a, mega, a mechanics workshop or something, somewhere that it will be safe. But now it's a nightmare for any Lagosian to have his car break down on the road because, first of all, the area boys will come and obtain what they should not obtain ordinarily. And then people will come that will tow the van or the car and then you'll pay through the nose. So what happened to the largesse, so to speak, that they were going to give Lagosians that they will tow your car free of charge to a place where it will be safe and then you'll get a mechanic to come repair it. That is not happening anymore. So a lot of things in the books are not translated into the physical thing. And I don't know whether it's a different realm that the laws exist, the regulations exist, the things that they need to do exist. So if this collaboration will make them sit up, no problem. Mm. But it's, it takes more than just coming together to get the job done. Mm. That's what you I know, think. You know, it, that's, that's it. it. It takes more than coming together to get a job done. Mm. I had an experience, um, I think, on Saturday, uh, coming from, uh, <laughs> from, I think, around um, um, uh, Aja, mm. you know, bridge, you know, f let me say flyover, yeah. towards VGC. And the vehicle I was in had a fan belt, belt issue. And uh, you packed, this is, this is about maybe 3 p.m., 4 p.m., mm. packed just underneath the, 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 the new flyover being constructed at VGC. Within two minutes, well, no, 30 seconds, boys came around mm. and they, ah, make we help with that. Wait till they happen. Ah, then they were willing to help. You know, if I wanted to show, that's where we could get a new fan belt to buy. And when the driver went to buy the fan belt, he rushed to go and call a mechanic who came with his tools. And he helped. But, you know, um, my security awareness had already kicked in. <laughs> you see my phone? I put it in the pigeonhole. I didn't put it in my bag. And then the driver's phone, I hit it somewhere. Where is going? I said, take your phone. Unfortunately, the car had been wound down. All the windows had been wound, wound down. Mm. And he went with the key. Um, a moment, a minute or so, three other area boys came around and they were playing. I thought they were playing mm. until I heard the sound of a breaking bottle. Yeah, a bottle? Serious. Yeah. I thought they were playing until I... This is saying that, you know, when accidents happen, until I heard the sound of a breaking bottle against the wall. Mm. I realized that that play had done something serious. One of them was chasing the other with the broken bottle. And you guys are trying to prevent him. I said, you know what? <laughs> um, I'm not the reason why there's a problem in Nigeria today. <laughs> I picked my stuff, left the car, mm. left it, and just crossed the road to, to a filling station at the entrance of VGC mm -hmm. and took some fresh air. <laughs> took some fresh air. You know, All these days, we have to, to pick our opportunities to be heroes. Mm. Yes, uh, you know. You should be a hero every time. <laughs> so, so, Lisa, so um, what you're saying is that 
they seen on their Twitter handle, they're saying they are looking for, waiting for, you know, towing truck to help tow. But mm. you're saying that the real experience of Lagosian is that when their vehicles break down, these guys ask them to pay them money. Yeah. Into their private bank accounts. Yes. It's really sad. All right, let, let's go on to the next uh, top trending story. This is, this is still about transportation. And we had something similar yesterday. Uh, a BRT bus uh, yesterday, Wednesday, um, was gutted yesterday when it was gutted by fire uh, on Ifako Bridge in, Wod in Wodokudu. The bus, uh, which was on Ifako Bridge in Wodokudu, um, coming from Iana Owuru, uh, was burning despite the heavy rain in the morning. And that's why we saw that uh, traffic, mm. heavy traffic there. Um, we hear that whilst uh, the rain was on, men of the state fire service were seen um, trying to contain the incident which occurred about 10, 25 a.m. That's why I saw that heavy uh, traffic. Uh, thousands of motorists coming from K2 Island, uh, from the island rather, heading towards K2 Ikordu, amongst other areas, were left stranded uh, on the bridge. You know, that's, uh, that's what we're told. There's a bit more to, to this story uh, than this because um, um, I'm hearing that uh, something happened uh, and that uh, some community boys you know, did something to that particular uh, uh, bus. But we had a commercial, a commercial bus driver died, you know. Yeah. There was yes. a collision. There was a collision yeah. between that BRT bus and then, of course, commercial bus, and the driver died. Now, the, 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 the story is that that bus, BRT bus, was actually set ablaze. It was set on fire. Because uh, of the death of the commercial driver, maybe? Yes, the downfall, like we call it, in mm -hmm. Lagos State. Um, it was a head-on collision between the BRT, which is a Lagos State Bus Rapid Transit uh, Service. It's owned by and operated by you know company uh, under the Lagos State government um, or for the Lagos State government. Um, that was Adifako. The driver we had of the commercial bus somersaulted, which somersaulted and twice, uh, died instantly as a result of loss of control due to overspeeding. Is what some reports are saying mm -hmm. okay well of course we wait for um, more but last month already put out a statement uh he they confirmed the accident and they said they are uh, produce rescued seven passengers with various degrees of injuries when i hear them saying they rescued you know so i wonder did they, did they just go and <laughs> take them or did they pull them out themselves but that's good um so they've done their preliminary investigation they put out a statement there um they've Put the blame on the commercial bus driver, you know, saying that these bus drivers, these Delta drivers, do not stop, you know, do not um, slow down, do not stop over speeding, they don't adhere to speed limit signs erected by government across the state, and that that is true. Okay, I yeah. I, I agree, but also but, but, but just a final one. Yeah. Uh, uh, the GM of Lasma, uh, Mr. Riaba, you know, has warned members of the public particularly area boys, or what we call street urchins, not to take law into their hands at any accident scene, but to allow appropriate authorities to handle the situation. So mm -hmm. that's what is believed that it's set fire to the PRT. Yeah, um, on Monday, I think, we talked about mental health and all of that. Um, I, I understand that some of these people that drive the BRT are just people who were down for drivers as well. And I wonder how, <laughs> yeah, I wonder how the it's training... So, it's so funny. The training for these drivers... <laughs> Uh, because they still behave the same way. You know, when, when the BRT had an accident with the train just a few weeks ago, it was because the, the BRT bus driver did not stop. And the passengers were saying that they kept warning him, do not do what you're trying to do. Do not cross at this moment. And he didn't stop. He thought he was smart enough. And then it resulted in the loss of lives, many lives and other people who were injured as well. It could have been prevented. So we now, we now think about, okay, if you're employing somebody to be a driver, so somebody who will be taking people from one destination to the other I mean, in the I'm name of the government. government. Yes, yeah. yeah. So what kind of tests do you give them? What kind of training do you give them? Do you evaluate their mental uh, health capacity to, to, to take some decisions, to do what they're supposed to do? Do they subject them to all these things? We're talking about police needing um, uh, evaluation, psy psychiatric evaluation or mm -hmm. something. We also need the drivers, the pilots, the, everybody that is involved 
in taking care of the lives of people, even if it is for a minute. Hmm. And I, I'm not sure these things are done. So while they are blaming the Danfo driver, he's dead and gone, he cannot defend himself, I think they should also look into how their own drivers, I'm talking about government now, how their own drivers behave. Because some, sometimes they talk to you anyhow, mm. they don't explain to you anything, they, they, they are very rude to you. The drivers and even the ticketers and everything in that chain. So the government should look into this as well so that some of these things can be avoided. I, I, I look at um, how the, the company involved you know, they try to do the professional things, and I think they train them. But you see, blood is thicker than water. At some <laughs> point, because I've used to BRT services, mm. and um, at some point I said to myself, maybe the female driver should be allowed to drive all the buses. Oh, you had a different experience from but, what but, I but, had but, with but, a female, female driver. But, but one day I used uh, that service, I, I changed my mind. <laughs> okay. None of them should be driving. You know, so it, it's, it's sad what the negotiations who would have to grapple with using the public, you know, uh, bus rapid trans transit services. Um, we, we have to go. Um, but, but also sad that, you know, these street urchins are able to, the fact that we don't have street urchins, the government is, you know, is trying to tell them, uh, the, you, know, uh, you know, tell them to do the right thing. We shouldn't be having this, this kind of, you know, thing in our society. You know, we shouldn't be having. If, you're, if you get stuck in traffic in some parts of Lagos, even that stretch at night, mm. You just have to lock your car and pray to God <laughs> in Lagos. All right, we'll take a break, and um, when we come back, we'll delve straight into our new super review segment. Stay with us.